Hello students, it's Miss Anderson here again to teach you more about the wonderful world of essay writing. This probably isn't going to be my most professional sounding video because it's a lot longer than the other ones and a lot more likely I'm going to screw up, but bear with me. In today's video, our goals are to understand how we can use the anatomy metaphor in boot camp to help us remember the different parts of an essay and how they work together. I'm going to briefly introduce each part of essay anatomy and review it for those of you who are familiar and give an overview of the next steps in essay boot camp. Today, these are the items you'll need. It's helpful if you can print out a copy of the essay anatomy skeleton and use that to guide your notes, but it's not necessary. If you can't print a copy of the skeleton that's posted on D2L, just use a piece of loose leaf and draw little symbols to help you remember each piece of anatomy that we review. If you're using the skeleton sheet, you can also use colored markers or crayons to color code and create a legend that matches the notes that you write on your skeleton. So the first thing we're going to talk about is why using anatomy as a metaphor helps us remember the parts of an essay and how they work together. There are a lot of different ways you can categorize the parts that make up an essay. I use the metaphor of a body to explain how the different parts of an essay work together. Um, this isn't the only way or the right way to talk about an essay though. No matter how we attempt to categorize the parts of an essay, there isn't a formula that fits every single essay. And also your goals as student writers are to become increasingly confident at writing so that you can creatively problem solve and write an essay that suits your needs rather than being limited to a specific formula that you have to follow every time. That said, knowing the different parts of an essay and using this metaphor to memorize them will help you increase your confidence in what you need to include in an essay so that you can start moving from formulaic writing to more um, personalized creative writing. So the first part that you're going to draw on your skeleton is a little talk bubble coming out of the mouth of the skeleton. The mouth of the skeleton represents our opening strategy because it's kind of like the small talk that happens at the start of an essay. It's intended to prime your audience for the topic. What I mean by that is you create an opening sentence or two that helps funnel the audience's attention towards a complex argument that you're going to make rather than opening immediately with your thesis and walloping them with this really complex idea right off the start. The next feature we're going to add to the skeleton is a brain. We can describe the thesis as the brain of an essay because every other part of the essay serves it. Without a thesis, you have a drooling zombie of an essay. It will be confusing, directionless, and it might even frighten people the way zombies do. Your thesis can be understood as the answer to a question. It's usually posed in the writing prompt. The first, it's the first part of the essay that you develop if you aren't a glutton for punishment. And what I mean by that is if you don't start by developing a thesis, you run the risk of doing a lot of work developing supporting arguments and gathering evidence that ultimately doesn't support the purpose of your essay, which is to answer the topic. So make sure you always start with the thesis. The brain is the most important part of the body. The thesis is the most important part of the essay. Next, you can add eyes to your skeleton. The roadmap of arguments works like the eyes of an essay. It's a sentence or two that helps the reader predict how your arguments are going to unfold throughout the rest of the essay. Don't state your roadmap of arguments like you're a sports announcer. What I mean by that is, you're not going to open with, first, I'll show you how blah, 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 then I will blah, 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 and finally, 
blah, blah, blah. Using really formulaic strategies like a first, then, finally, or a listing sentence gets the job done, but it doesn't demonstrate your ability to write with artistry and refinement. So if you're still struggling with essay writing, it's okay to start with a formulaic roadmap of argument sentence where you list the main points you're gonna make. But as you become a more confident writer, you should aspire to create a sentence or two that summarizes the overall arc of your ideas. In doing so, you'll help the reader predict how your arguments unfold in the essay, but you won't be doing it in a really choppy, one step at a time sort of way. Next, you can color in the ribs on your skeleton. These ribs symbolize your main ideas. These ideas are, these are the ideas that you use to explain and develop your thesis. There's no rule about how many main ideas you need. In the past, you might have been told you have to have three body paragraphs. And that's often because in junior high, it's a good rule of thumb for students to write three body paragraphs because it ensures that they're developing their topic as fully as they're capable. By the time you're in high school, you're developing more complex ideas and they might require more than three main ideas. So instead of worrying about how many paragraphs you're gonna write in an essay, focus on thoroughly developing your idea, or sorry, thoroughly developing your thesis with as many main ideas as you need. Like ribs, these main ideas create structure for the guts of your essay. And the guts of your essay are going to be the details, evidence, and explanation that you use to support your main ideas. So moving on to the guts of your essay, we call these supporting details and explanation. So often a main idea requires further elaboration for the reader to understand what you mean. You then have to support your explanation with evidence that makes your ideas convincing to the audience. That might include examples, details, or quotes from a text that you're referring to. A good analytical essay includes a good balance of explanation and evidence so that the reader can fully understand your ideas and so that the reader finds your ideas convincing and well-rooted in evidence. These are the guts that you use to support the main ideas, and those main ideas are the ribs that hold in and organize the guts. Next, choose one of the vertebrae on your skeleton, probably one of the top ones, like I've done here in blue, and shade that in. This top vertebrae represents the role that topic sentences play in your essay. Topic sentences introduce the idea being developed in each paragraph. And again, as a beginning writer, these might seem very formulaic, but as you become a more experienced writer, you're trying to create more fluid and natural transitions by writing topic sentences that introduce the idea, but they don't just list it. Like vertebrae, topic sentences work with transition sentences, and together they connect the ideas in your essay. This is much like how a spine works to keep the spinal cord in order. If you do severe damage to your spine, there is a lack of connection between the different parts of your body, and suddenly you might not be able to walk or control other parts of your body because they're disconnected from the brain or the thesis, if we're talking about essays. It's important to understand that topic sentences guide the reader through your ideas from one paragraph to the next. Next, you can shade in the vertebrae right underneath the one that you just colored. So in this case, I've shaded in the vertebrae right underneath the blue one. Oh, sorry, I changed slides. Transition sentences explain the relationship between two ideas. They can be used at the end of a paragraph to help the reader anticipate the relationship between the current idea 
and the next idea. At first, again, you might struggle to write sentences that aren't really formulaic or direct, but getting in the habit of being intentional about how you wrap up one paragraph and guide the reader into another is really important. So even starting with a formulaic transition sentence is better than not having one at all. That leads us to the closing paragraph. The closing paragraph works kind of like a good pair of legs. It gives the ideas of your essay mobility or relevance beyond just the essay. The purpose of the closing paragraph is to sum up your thesis or your purpose for writing. It should include the worldly relevance of your thesis or call your audience to action if you're writing an essay that's persuading them to do something. To represent the closing paragraph, you can decorate the bottom of your skeleton, the legs and the feet, however you want. I opted for sneakers here, but you could put a skateboard under the feet, rocket boots, moon boots, stilettos, hot pants, a Hawaiian grass skirt. Really, the options are endless, just endless, but I digress. So in closing, the closing paragraph is meant to help create closure for your audience. They should be able to tell that the, or your audience should be able to tell that you're done your essay. They should have a clear sense of what your thesis was and how it was supported. And they should have some idea of how you've created an idea that has relevance in the world around them. And now for a brief intermission in which we will appreciate my cats. Behold these fine specimens of felinehood. The orange cat is clockwork. She is a tabby that I rescued from my great aunt, and she's now 14 years old, which means she's probably older than some of you or your siblings. The tortoiseshell cat is named Freya. She's five years old right now, and the terror of our household. These cats' hobbies include bathing in puddles of sunlight in the morning, glaring homicidally at the squirrels outside the window, and running around and knocking crap over in the middle of the night. Thank you for taking a moment to appreciate my glorious cats. Now, on to the real learning. What are the next steps in our, boot, our essay boot camp? What we're trying to do next is apply what we understand about essay anatomy to the topic that we've been assigned to write an essay on. You're gonna to go to Brightspace or D2L, open your course and find the topic sheet that your teacher assigned you. Then you're going to go to part four of our video series and use that video to guide you through unpacking the topic on your topic sheet. Good luck.